Our next case is one of the most famous cases in uh, the study of law, Paul's Graph versus Long Island Railroad. And, and, and every, every lawyer studies this case. This, this, this case is, is something that, that you, will, you will probably, most probably study when you, when you get to law school. And, it, and it's, it's an old New York case. It's, uh, it's a famous case. It goes back to 1928. And it, 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 it is a very important case concerning the area of negligence. Uh, you, will, you will find that uh, this will be a, a very important case for you to read, to review, to, to, to go over more than once probably, because it sets forth uh, the opinion of a, a very well-respected judge, Judge Cardoza. And uh, it's a very famous, ca famous case. Now, essentially, the facts here are, are, are almost, they're not entirely comical, but somewhat amusing. It certainly wasn't amusing to Mrs. Paul's graph, who was, who was in fact, injured. But it identifies a, a very interesting sequence of events. And, and apparently what happened was a man was carrying a, 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 a package, and he's, he's at the railroad station, the Long Island Railroad Station. There's a train in the station. Mrs. Paul's graph is at the end of the other end of the station. And this, this guy comes running toward to the train uh, to catch a train. She's waiting for a different train. And he jumps onto the train apparently as it's, as it's pulling out. There's a conductor on board the train, and there's a conductor behind him. So as he jumps onto the train, he's, he, he appears as though he's going to fall or stumble or something like that. So the conductor on board the train pulls him in, and the conductor behind the train pushes him on board. As this is happening, the package that he, he's carrying falls, and it falls from his grasp, and apparently the train is pulled out, so it falls apparently behind him, one would imagine, but either on behind him or on the platform, somehow this package, which you know no one knows the contents of, falls to the rails and it explodes. It is a package that contains fireworks. The concussion from the fireworks explosion on the train tracks causes the scales on the other end of the platform to fall and injure Mrs. Paul's graph. Okay? So Mrs. Paul's graph is now injured as a result of, of uh, of th this incredible series of events. So she, th th as I said before, this is a, a very famous uh, uh, litigation, a very famous case. And uh, one of the things to keep in mind is that we're, we're talking about uh, causation here. Uh, and when you're, when you're reading this case, bear in mind, just constantly think to yourself that we're talking about causation. This case is about causation. Uh, very often when you're, when you're studying the law, you will find some boring facts that put you to sleep. Sometimes you find exciting facts, but they may be, may, they may be a distraction. Understand why you're reading the case at all times. Understand why it's important to, under, to, to read about Mrs. Paul's graph. And whatever you do, remember something. Ultimately, Mrs. Paul's graph lost. Remember the fact that Mrs. Paul's graph lost it, and when you think about, when you realize that fact, you can backtrack later on and figure out, okay, why did Mrs. Paul's graph lose? Um, we go into uh, the, the, uh, the fact that she's uh, making a, a claim for negligence. And uh, the court says, Judge Cardoza says, nothing in the situation gave notice that the falling package had in it the, potent the potency of peril to persons thus removed. Negligence is not actionable unless it involves the invasion of a legally protected interest, the violation of, of a right. Okay. In other words, you can, you can be negligent uh, by falling asleep uh, at the wheel of your car, but if the car is parked, you know, it, it doesn't matter. You don't want to be negligent driving the car. So ne there, negligence, negligence requires some sort of not only uh, law, negligence requires a duty. Negligence requires some duty of care that a person owes in any given circumstance. And um, the question of injury comes as to whether or not that person uh, who, was, who was being sued uh, filled their duty of care, was, was, was proper in, in, in uh, effectuating their duty of care. Uh, the court goes on to say that the plaintiff, as she stood upon the platform of the station, might be protected against intentional invasion, intentional invasion of her bodily security. Such invasion is not charged. She might claim to be protected against unintentional invasion by conduct involving, in the thought of reasonable men, an unreasonable hazard that such invasion would ensue.
But these facts, you know, what, what, he, what we have here in this case, uh, you know, is a situation where no hazard was apparent to the eye of ordinary vigilance, an act of innocent harmlessness, at least to the out, outly seeming. In other words, what was this? I mean, how would anyone perceive that a person carrying a package would drop the package, the package would fall to the tracks, explode, and then cause uh, uh, some scales at the end of the platform to fall over from the concussion and then hit somebody and injure that. Uh, this is, the court goes into a, a series of hypos, uh, a series of fact patterns uh, on your materials. When you, when you click on the link, you can you know, look at those, the, those fact patterns. But basically the court is saying, look, uh, we, we, we cannot extend this, kind, the, the, this, this protection to unforeseeable events. Events that are reasonable, injuries that are reasonably foreseeable uh, are things that will be protected. Um, the court mentioned the, the, the concept of derivative rights, whether or not uh, Mrs. Paul's graph rights, Mrs. Paul's graph is bringing a claim here, basically saying that because the guy who was pushed was uh, injured in the sense that he was touched by the, the, uh, the, the, the employees of the railroad, her rights are derivative from his rights. And the, and the court says, well, no, no, we're not, we're not going to extend it this far. Because if you do that, you could have one person in a crowd of people who's, who, who's, uh, who, who's touched by a person next to him. And then you say somebody at the outer edge of that crowd is, uh, might be injured as, as, as a result of that touching. And, and, and that we cannot hold. Uh, the, the court called that an orbit of duty also an orbit of danger, and, and, and uh, that's uh, a very effective way of, of perceiving the, uh, the situation. Uh, the court has a series of different hypotheticals about a speedway, a race course, and such. Um, and the court says, you know, negligence like risk is a term of relation. Negligence in the, ab in the abstract, apart from things related, is surely not a tort. Um, the commission of a wrong, and the commission of a wrong imports the violation of a right. In this case, we hold that the right to be protected against interference with one's bodily security. Uh, if the harm was not willful, he must show that the act to him, the act as to him, had possibilities of danger so so many and apparent as to entitle him to be protected against the doing of it, though the harm was unintended. Now, when you're studying this case, you see the a line that says the law of causation, remote or proximate, is thus foreign to the case before us. Proximate cause, remember that terminology, proximate cause. Remember the fact that Mrs. Paul's graph was hit by the scales, and the scales were at the far end of the train track, and that was the proximate cause of her injury. The fact that a man was pushed by employees of the Long Island Railroad far away from where the scales were were not the proximate cause of her injury.